Welcome to Level Header Gamer. My name is Joseph, and today I got the ultimate beginner's guide for Returnal for all the new players jumping on onto Returnal or their first time playing a roguelike in a roguelike game. We're going to go through everything possible that you're going to need to know to be successful in this game. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. You can dash not just away from projectiles, but actually right through them. If you want to get closer to the enemy and you don't want to get hit by the projectile, you can easily do it by dashing through the projectile, which is very helpful for bosses. The second one I got for you, if you're low on health, you can just fast travel back to your ship and you can heal up at the bed by resting. And you can do that two times. It's really great in the beginning as you're trying to figure the game out. Or if you're about to fight the boss, you could always go back, heal up really quick, and then go for the boss full health. The third one is thoroughly explore the areas. There are a bunch of secret rooms with useful resources. You can usually see this room being marked by a glowing yellow light and it pulsates on the map. That's how you know where to find it. But be warned, sometimes there's difficult enemies in there. Most of the time, it's just a couple of helpful resources that's a little bit less noticeable that this room is able for you to kind of jump in there and find. Be on the lookout also for side path rooms with projections in them. You'll see various projections of the sentience. You know to go into this room all the time because it's going to grant you a free chest in the area no matter which biome you're in. And sometimes either a malignant item or a parasite and a malignant chest, usually you'll get all these in that same room. So it can be quite useful to find these rooms. Next one I got for you is when you open up the ability to go into the next biome, actually don't rush automatically going to the second one. Prepare for that. Grind a little bit, explore, let's say, under overgrown ruins. Get your character a little bit more powerful, higher weapons proficiency before you go on to Crimson Waste or the, any of the other biomes because you're going to have a much easier time already powered up going in there. Spend about half an hour, 40 minutes if you can to kind of leveling yourself up. Next one is do overloads all the time as they buff your damage. They're not easy to do, so that means you have to count your shots on your guns like shotguns and pistols. And for rifles, you just kind of be prepared for it to press R2 at the right time, like an active re reload on Gears of War, and it'll grant you bonuses. And it's extremely helpful, if not always easy to do. Another one is picking up health at max health will actually extend your life bar the same way resin pickups do if you pick up enough of them. Also, utilize all your mobility skills to avoid damage and build up your adrenaline meter. Not to mention moving about the environment really helps break up enemy groups and makes it easier for you to avoid damage. That was one of the mistakes I did when I just started playing the game is I was a little bit too stationary. As soon as it become mobile jumping about the environment, it was a lot easier to pick off enemies one by one. The next tip I got for you is Ether has the ability to clear malignant chests and malignant items or it can grant you an extra life with a reconstructor room, but don't hoard all these ethers as the max you can carry is 30, and it's quite easy for you to find them in the world. They're not extremely difficult to obtain. Malfunctions can be removed by fulfilling certain objectives. So if you get a malfunction on your character, it'll usually tell you what kind of objectives you have that you need to fulfill, to remove that malfunction or you have certain parasites that do the same thing and even consumables that become extremely useful with a, I remember one of the consumables being a rechargeable one. Another tip I got for you is melee is a great way to do one shot kills on smaller enemies and stun bigger opponents to open them up for massive damage. Which goes into my next tip is aiming down the sights exposes enemy weak points for a lot more damage. So imagine if you stun them with a knife and then you aim down the sights, shoot them at the point. It really just takes care of those bigger enemies much quicker. The next tip I got for you is when you enter a room that emits a green light, what it's doing, it's buffing all the enemies in the area and you won't be able to really kill them unless you can kill them with one head melee. So the best thing to do is run to the end of the room, find this column emitting the green light, take it out as quickly as you can. This way it makes it so much easier to fight off the rest of the enemies. But the smaller enemies can be taken out with a melee hit. Next step tip I got for you is higher level weapons are not always the best ones to pick up because either the alternative fire mode might not be the most ideal or a lower tier, let's say rifle, will actually be better than a higher tier pistol sometimes if it's a really slow rate of fire or it's uh, alternate fire is not exactly what you're looking for. The next tip is knowing the meaning of each door and its symbols. For example, triangle rooms are side paths 
that are great for uh, acquiring certain artifacts or weapons. Rectangle rooms are usually towards progressing the level. And if you see a rectangle with a circular or a triangular shape above it, it's usually a teleportation room to another biome. But if it's a rectangular door with a star above it and the door glows yellow on the minimap, that's going to let you know it's a challenge room. It's usually a difficult room with a bunch of enemies in there, but usually the rewards are worth the risk. And if you see a red marked room, that of course means there's a boss in that area. So you know to prepare yourself if you're going to go down that path. The next tip is use your melee to break down vines and certain statues with glowing eyes, which you can also shoot if you want, that will grant you obelites, as well as there's certain secret rooms that are harder to find. I've actually only found it once so far. I don't know if I have a video. I'll show it to you. It's a glowing kind of a red wall, and it looks fragile, which you can actually break down with your sword, and you shall have an item inside there as well. It, there's no way to know on the mini map where those walls are, so you kind of have to keep an eye out for it. The next one is at the fabricator, there's always one station where you can donate obelite into the repository. Now, if you do that, it usually grants you rewards. And most of the time, those rewards are going to be ether, which is really useful for other things, as I mentioned before. There's also going to be gated doors that can be opened with certain switches in the area. Now, what you have to do with these guys is the easiest way to find it is aim your gun down the side near the gate and it's going to start emitting sound effects, letting you know around the area where the switch is and then just shoot it, opens up the gate, voila, you can pick up the chest. The next one I got for you is destroying nests that you see those purple nests of uh, for the parasites. If you start destroying them all in the area, whether they be in the secret rooms or in the world, they usually will have one or two of them will have malignant upgrades or even parasites for you. And sometimes they can be quite useful. Now, if you ever encounter glowing technical creatures that don't attack you but run away from you, they usually go light, like kind of golden color. Make sure to run up to them and take them out as quickly as you can as they're walking treasure chests like in Diablo 3. So if you kill them, there's usually some rare items in them that can really help you along the way. Now, the last two tips are going to be probably the most useful ones I can give you is that the Astro Scout or Astronaut Scout artifact, a lot of people don't know what it does. It's actually going to grant you an extra life. So if you're able to buy it at a fabricator or find it in the beginning when you start your run at that random artifact generator, it can be extremely useful to make your run slightly easier and so that you have an extra chance in case you die. But that goes even further if you find a reconstructor room which has the shape of a sentient. If you give it six ether, again, it'll give you another life. But this time around, you would have to respawn in that specific reconstructor. Do keep in mind that if you pay that reconstructor to give you that extra life in case you die, but you move on to the next biome, that effect is negated, which I found out today. There you go, guys. That's my ultimate combination of all the beginner tips that should really help you with this game as well. As long as, and as well as one more tip for you guys, as I see a bunch of you guys struggling with the game is know that you have to die a lot in this game. It's a learning process. A lot of people feel like they just should be able to progress to the game with no problem. That's the structure of a roguelite or a roguelite game is that you die and the more times you die and keep trying and keep learning, your runs become longer and better. For example, I had a three hour run today where I took out two bosses just because I was a lot more careful and was exploring. It was really upgrading my character. So it can, it will improve just by trial and error as well. So don't get discouraged, guys. And hopefully this was a useful video to you. If it was, make sure to subscribe down below and make sure you enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace out.